I want to talk to you on the topic of keep Satan out. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, keep him out. Come on, turn to your other neighbors to say, keep him out. And James 4, 7 says this, submit yourself then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. We have to understand that this world is more spiritual than we think. We live in the warfare. We live in a place where we, as Christians, we don't just say, oh, we got saved. Let's just sit back, relax, and just enjoy this the relationship with God. No, we have an enemy to fight. His name is Satan and his demons. And he's out there walking around like a roaring lion, seeing whom he can devour. We have to understand that it's when we are in the warfare, we are soldiers in the army. We don't come to church just to warm the pew, just to hear a good message that you're going to make it and leave back to our house. No, we come to this place, to the church, to be empowered to fight the good fight like a soldier in the army. Amen. We come here to be equipped with the spiritual armor of God that when we face our troubles, a situation, when we face temptations that we are able to overcome because he he overcame in Jesus name amen in John 10 10 it clearly states that the thief has come only to steal kill and destroy but I have come to give you life and life more abundantly in Luke 10 verses 18 through 19 Jesus says I saw Satan fall like lightning he says I have given you authority to trample on the snakes and scorpions and to over overcome all the power of the enemy Satan was stripped of his power. Satan has lost the keys and Jesus came. He kicked him off his throne and he's like, yo, have the keys. Do you think Satan's going to be like, oh, okay, I'm just going to back off. No, he's going to attack you. He's not going to just sit back. That's why many times we, when we come to Christ, when we start trying to do and go after God, we receive opposition. We receive attack and not. Why? Because you have the keys of the kingdom. You have the authority and the power that was stripped from Satan. He will do everything that he can in his power to attack you. He will do everything in his power to defeat you, to send you temptations, to, to try to uh, lie against you, to, to say this or that because you have the keys and the authority that was invested in the name of Jesus at your command. Warfare is necessary. As Christians, we are soldiers in the army of God. We're not just spectators. We're not just people that come to sit on the Sunday message, just hear a good message. No, God has given us authority so we can fight for ourselves, that we can fight for our family. The fathers can fight for their families. The mothers can fight for their children. The, the men can fight for their businesses. The women can fight for their marriages. The men can fight for their financial breakthrough. The we as Christians can fight for those who cannot fight. Amen. God has given that authority and it is at your and my disposal. Amen church. Here it talks about in James 4 7 it says before that we can resist there must be a submit. Before we can resist the enemy we have to submit to God. We have to that submission is full surrender. Submission is not just a Sunday morning visit to hungry generation submit is full surrender to God many times we begin to experience attack in our lives because we only gave God a Sunday service and the rest of the week belongs to us it says God why is Satan attacking me because you haven't fully surrendered you are still the owner of your life there was a story that the pastor Vlad shared that you know there's a there's a there's a man that invited Jesus into his house and he says Jesus I'm so happy that I invited you to my house here's the best room of the house and the next day there's a door there's a knock on the door and then as this man opens the door Satan puts his foot in and begins to wrestle with this man begins to strive and this man was so weary and says Jesus where were you and Jesus said you are only giving me a part of your house not the full house before we can resist there must be a submission to God a full surrender to God say God you own it all I know that I've tried on my own and that I did not succeed I've done this and this and my life only led to ruin when I'm only left to my weakness I'm left to destruction I'm left to my own strength and I know that my strength my perfect strength is as good as weakness because it's only in his strength that we are made perfect amen church 
When we fully surrender our lives to God with everything that we have in our marriages, with our families, with our businesses, with our health, with everything that we have, God will give us authority and the power and the thing to stand against the enemy. That when he comes against our life, that we are no longer fighting him on our own strength, that we can fight him through Jesus Christ who overcame sin and death and gave us victory. Amen, church? submission is not just only a Sunday thing it's not just only visiting uh life groups it's not just only just serving once a month it's a full dedication to God I challenge you surrender your life fully to God there's one thing that I've always seen through my life I've been in church for for some time and I've seen sometimes when people just give God just a little bit of their life they struggle they struggle they struggle until they come to a full complete surrender to God to God take it all then God will begin to solve the, the unsolvable marriage problems in their life. God will begin to provide for them. God will begin to become their strength, and their peace in the hardest time of their life. Why? Because their life is no longer their own. It is in God's hands. Amen, church? When you are in this place, maybe you're experiencing an attack. Maybe you're facing certain things in your life. Begin to examine your life. God, where are certain things I did not surrender? Where are certain things that I'm still fighting on my own instead of relying on your strength? Instead of relying on your mercy, on your grace in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Second point is that the process of knowing of the truth is time. And the result of it is victory. Jesus said, if you know the truth, the truth will begin to set you free. Amen. But the knowing of the truth, it takes time. It's not just a little bit that, you know, God, I'm going to, I'm going to a little bit memorize this or God, I'm gonna just going to uh, pray to you, you know, just a little bit and that's it. No, knowing God, it takes time. It is the relationship with God that we begin to maintain. And as you know God, God will begin to give you victories in him. So you have to understand sometimes people come to say, Pastor, pray for me. Pastor, I have this thing in my life. Yes, pastors can pray, but the fight still belongs to you. Pastor is not there at your house. Pastor is not there at your weakest moment. Pastor is not there at your workplace, in your marriage, or in your business. Pastor is not there. That's why God equips us to fight the good fights. He says, if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. That at your weakest point, you can be like Jesus, knowing how to overcome the enemy. Why? Because you have the truth of God inside of your life. Amen? Amen. Knowing of the truth takes time. It is the relationship we begin to cultivate with God. It's not just a Sunday service. It is a life fully surrendered and dedicated to Him. One life for Jesus is that's all that we have. One life for him is the only that we can live for because every time we try to live life by ourselves, we are left to our own destructions. Ask any man of the Bible, any hero of faith, and they will tell you one thing that trusting God with their full life always gave him victory, always gave him peace, always gave him satisfaction. Knowing is relationship, relationship is not just prayer relationships also knowing his word relationship is knowing the power of God the Bible says that Jesus and the word are one you can't just know Jesus the relationship just pray a little bit and not know his word this word has to become part of your life his word has to be part of you that way you talk the way you think it has to dominate your life because Jesus and the word are one relationship with Jesus Christ will never leave you empty because it is satisfying relationship with Jesus Christ will never leave you on this side because the Bible talks about I have been the, David says I've been young and I've been old never seen a righteous forsaken or his descendants begging for bread God says I am faithful I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you if you know me I will be faithful through your life and I will see you I'll protect you I'll guide you I will be with you and I will never leave you I'll never forsake you amen <laughs> knowing the word of God begin to spend time with God's word let God's word begin to dominate your mind. Let God's word will begin to dominate your conversation. Let God's word begin to dominate in everything that you do because it is one thing that is proven throughout time to stand the test. In Matthew 24, 35 says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word by no means will pass away. David talks about that his word is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. He is my refuge. He is my hiding place. In whom can I trust? 
And God and David throughout his throughout this life always went to God and always spent time with God and his word and always quoted. He said that I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. His word became everything to him because he knew that Jesus and the word are one. If I, I am to spend time with God, I'm spent time in his word. I am to spend time with the, with the truth of God's word that when I know his word will set me free. Amen. How can I talk weakness when Psalm 27 verse 1 says that he is the strength of my life. How can I talk defeat when Romans 8 37 says that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus our Lord. How can I begin to talk bondage and, and, and shackles over my life when John 8 36 says whom the son sets free is free indeed. How can I talk lack and shortage I'm not having enough when Philippians 4 19 says that he will supply all my needs according to his riches and to his glory. How can I begin to talk about pain and sickness when Exodus 15 26 says that I am the Lord that heals you. How can I begin to talk what I can do when I can do when Philippians 4 13 says I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Come on somebody. Let God's word begin to dominate your mind. Let God's word begin to dominate your mouth because to the extent that you have the word of God in your life is to the same extent you have the power of God in every situation in your life. God says watch your words. Watch your words because there's power in the words, in your, in your tongue. In Numbers 18, 24, God says to Israelites, look, it's like what I heard you say, that I will begin to do in your life. God pays attention to your words. God pays attention to your thoughts because he says if you're going to speak your own feelings, if you're going to begin to speak your own statistic, what happened, what didn't happen, the same thing I'll begin to do by because there's power in your mouth. God's word in Jesus' lips gave him power over Satan in the weakest point of his life. It says when he was hungry, when he was weak, Jesus didn't quote, oh, this or that. No, Jesus quoted, it is written and Satan fell and flee from him. Same thing, the word of God on your lips, on the lips of the believer will have power over every situation in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. The same word that healed the centurion will begin to heal you today in Jesus mighty name. Whatever sickness, whatever disease that you have will begin to heal you today. Same word that the delivered the daughter of the woman who had, a, who had a demon possessed daughter and Jesus sent for his word and she was delivered at that same spot will deliver you today and now in Jesus mighty name. Amen same word that brought financial breakthrough to the widow of Zarephath is the same word that will begin to bring financial breakthrough in your life today in Jesus mighty name amen church God's word will begin to create God's word will begin to heal God's word is going to begin to bring to bring breakthrough in your life in Jesus mighty name trust in him and he will not fail so you have to understand that Jesus cannot offer a solution to anyone who keeps their bible shut we have to take the time to spend with his word. We have to take the time that when we pray, the prayer and Bible goes hand in hand. You can't just say that I'm going to pray and not read his word because Jesus and his word are one. You have to take the time to memorize his word, to make it have part of you because to that same extent that you know the word of God, you'll have the power of God in your situation. God wants you to be an overcomer. God doesn't want you to talk about his, your weakness. God wants you to talk about his strength and what he's done on your life. The week he, he can do through your life, what he can do through your hands, in your family, in your marriage, in your business, whatever that your hand touches will be blessed. You walk in, you'll be blessed and you walk out, you'll be blessed. You'll be blessed in church, you'll be blessed in your workplace. Everything that you do will be blessed. Why? Because you and God, you and God's word are one. Your answer to everything is in the Word of God. Is in the Word of God. Somebody say, my answer to everything is in the Word of God. We have to understand that, last point I want to bring this to a close, that we don't choose if we fight. We only choose who we fight. We, we don't have an option once we become Christians. We don't have options as we become humans. We're always in a warfare. 
That's why many times people say, why there's so much evil in this world? Why? Because Satan's lost his dominion. That's why. Satan has lost his dominion. He'll do everything that he can. When he sees the image of God in you, he'll do everything that he can to attack. It's not to be the Debbie the Downer or, or just say, oh, we're always under attack. No, we have to know what we have on the inside of us. We have to know that we are more than conquerors. We have to know that, that, that all the power and all the authority in heaven and on earth has been invested in the name Jesus Christ. And that name Jesus Christ is given to you at your command against the enemy. Amen. Satan and his demons flee at the name of Jesus. And Jesus says, I'm giving you the authority to trample on snakes, on scorpions, and to overcome any, any power of the enemy. And nothing by any means will hurt you. You. why because Jesus has given his authority to you and I if you come to this church we want to equip you we don't want to just say things are going to be good in your life we're going to tell you hey you're going to fight today we're going to fight today we're going to fight for people who can't fight for themselves today we're going to fight for the children that are still on drugs today we're going to fight against bondages that circle people's lives the sin the generational curse has been passed down from generation to generation to generation and today you're faced with it we're going to fight with you we're soldiers in the army of god the bible says that the kingdom of heaven suffer violence and the violent men take it by force god does not enroll just for us to come to church and babysit god enrolls warriors God in words enrolls people who are able to fight he says I'm giving you the weapons of warfare and they're not carnal but they are mighty for pulling down strongholds they're mighty to overcome every power of the enemy in your life we don't choose if we fight we only choose who we fight and today our common enemy is Satan and his demons and we're gonna put him to test we're gonna put him to flight because Jesus has given us the power amen church Many people ask, why do we fight? In 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can devour. As long as we have flesh, as long as we live in this world, we have to fight. We have to fight because God has given us that authority. Satan has lost his all power. He's stripped of all his power. I have a, I have a son, and sometimes when I give, take from him, something that's his and I give it to his sister Annika oh he throws a fit I just take it from him to so give it to Annika I'm like hey you take it and he just like goes ballistic goes jumping does his uh fake soccer injuries just flops on the floor and just ah you know and then Annika sees that this guy is, is, my, is basically going crazy she runs behind me and hides and that's how Satan is he was stripped of his power and the power was given to somebody that was lesser than him and his image and he begins to throw this fit. All the thing that we have to do is come behind the Father and know that he is with us and he's fighting the battle with us. Amen, church? He is on our side and we are victorious. Many people say, I'm, I'm tired of fighting. I've been fighting all my life. I've been doing this. I've been staying strong. I just things are not working out. In, in 1 Samuel 30 verse 3, David found himself in the same battle he found himself in the same battle because he comes from a place where he was fighting he's brought the victory and as he's coming to his hometown he begins to receive a defeat and I want to read you the scripture because it's really powerful it says when David and his men reached Ziklag they found it destroyed by fire and their wives and their son daughters taken captive so David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength to weep David was greatly distressed because men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in his spirit because of their sons and their daughters. And, and listen to this. It says, but David found strength in the Lord his God. When you, are, when you are tired of fighting, begin to find strength in God. Begin to come to God and say, God, strengthen me again. God, renew my wings. God, renew my strength like the wings of eagle. God, I know that you are my refuge and you are my hiding place. When I can no longer fight, when I, when I feel weak. See, see, David was at a point where he says, I can't do it anymore. And he says he found strength in God. And he came to God and said, God, should I pursue and will I win? And God says, pursue, you'll overtake. And he recovered everything that the enemy took from his life. 
So many times we come to church and we become disappointed because this person said this, this thing, this it happened. You know, I prayed for this and didn't happen. And you are weak like David was. But find strength in God. He is your refuge. He is your hiding place. He's your all in all. Begin to come to him and begin to say, God, I can't do no, I can't fight anymore, but strengthen me. And God will give you strength. He'll begin to renew you. God will give you the weapons of warfare. God, God will stand with you and he will say that you are no longer fighting on your strength. You're fighting with me and I have overcome sin and death and you are victorious. Amen, church? See, we have to understand we are never fighting for victory. Jesus didn't come to us and say, I want you to fight because I, I want you to be victorious. He says, no, I want you to fight because you got the victory already. You already won, just fight. There's a difference. Because many times when we fight for victory and we don't receive the victory, we feel like we failed. But God says, no, you got the victory, so fight. You got the victory, so fight. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Why? Because you already have it on the, you, on the inside of you, so begin to fight because of that. God gives you strength. God begins to give you power to overcome and you will be like David that will come against your enemy and you will fight and you will overcome and you'll restore everything that the enemy has stolen from your life. Amen church. I want to build your faith this morning. I want to build you today to believe that with God you are able to do things. Don't just stand on the sideline and say whatever happens will happen. Begin to fight for your families. Begin to fight for your marriages. Begin to fight for your families, for your futures, for your career, for your businesses. Why? Because God has given you the weapons of a warfare that are not carnal but mighty in God. Stand on the Word of God which is sure, which is pure, which has power to overcome the enemy. Satan knows that he's defeated. And he'll do everything that he can to bring you that lie. That, oh no, you're not going to win this time. That the bondage that you have, you're not going to overtake. But the name of Jesus is more powerful than any sin, than any bondage, than any generational curse in your life. And you will overcome in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Psalm 144 verse 1 says, Blessed be the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. God trains us as soldiers to make war. That when you leave this place, you just don't need, hey, pastor, pray for me. No, you look at that sickness and you begin to say that in Exodus 15, 26, says, God, you are my healer and I'm standing upon this healing. I'm not basing my faith on the result of my prayer. I'm basing my faith on the word of God that changes not. Whether he heals me or not, he's still my healer. Whether he saves me or not, he's still my savior. Whether he delivers me or not, he's still my redeemer. I will trust in him because he does not fail. He does not fail. Warfare is necessary for victory. We fight because we already have the victory. You fight because you already have the victory. As we're going to pray today, as we're going to stand, begin to know what belongs to you begin to know that it is not on our strength that we come against the enemy it is in his strength it is the name Jesus at our command against every power of the many every power of the enemy the heaven and earth all the power and all the authority has been invested in the name Jesus and Satan is not afraid of your words he's afraid of God's word in your lips because he has the power to change circumstances he has the power to heal he has the power to save he has the power to deliver he has the power to bring breakthrough where there's doors are being shut you know, I remind myself every day with scriptures and I begin to quote those because sometimes the enemy begins to send thoughts. Sometimes the enemy begins to send this and this in your life. But we have to understand your thoughts and your statistics and your feelings have never made a difference. But God's word has. And his word will begin to rely. His word is flawless. His word is pure. Like silver purified in the furnace of the earth. Like gold refined seven times. God's word will never fail you. I want to encourage you. Take God's word and make it part of your life. As you leave this place, as you stand on the word of God, begin to quote every promise. And there's so much promises of God for your life. Begin to stand upon that and fight the good fights. Don't begin to pray for God. God, give me a better life. Begin to pray. God, give me a spirit of a finisher. Give me a spirit of a fighter. Like Paul said at the end of his life, that I have fought the good fight and I finished the race. 
And now to me, behold the crown that good judge the Lord will give to me. Begin to ask for that because Jesus said that in this world you have trouble. But do not fear because I have overcome the world. God is victorious. Don't be afraid of any challenge that you face. Don't be afraid of any sickness that you face because Jesus has overcome the world and he said, I am with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He says, be strong and be courageous. Do not be afraid or do not panic before them because I will be with you. I will guide you. I will protect you. I will never forsake you. Come on, somebody. Let's begin to rise up on our feet and give God glory for that.